On the day of our appointment, the eighth floor of the Gonda building was our destination, for it is here that the world-famous neurology department is located. Diana, before going to the Mayo Clinic, we knew that Glenn's neurological condition was very, very serious. That's why we went there. What is the diagnosis that we were hoping for? Since coming back from Victoria, British Columbia, Canada to Detroit, Michigan, USA, way back in April, I've had to turn my back on travels with Lobo to deal with more pressing matters. As I said in my Detroit trailer in September 2017, I'm here in Detroit as a caregiver for my brother who is suffering from PTSD, post-traumatic stress syndrome. The few times I had my brother in one of my vlogs was in March 2018 for the vlog Detroit St. Patrick's Day Parade. It's a warm sunny day in Detroit as I stand on Michigan Avenue waiting for the start of the St. Patrick's Day Parade and somebody just put a hat on my head. Anyway, that's all right. And how excited are you to see your very, very first St. Patrick's Day Parade? Very excited. Very excited. Yes. Very now, can you show your excitement, please? Yeah, I am. <laughs> All right. Good to have you here. Hey, Glenn. Yes. Did you enjoy your day in Corktown for the uh, St. Patrick's Day Parade? Yes, I did, yeah. How much did you enjoy it? A whole lot. It was great to have you along. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. By the way, my brother used to be a certified public accountant with his own accounting firm. And that's all history now. From this point, things only got worse and worse, and there was no turnaround. We had to face it when local tests here in Rochester, Michigan, and at the University of Michigan in Ann Arbor, Michigan, did not show any conclusive evidence of what was wrong. Well, uh, desperate times call for desperate measures and if you're in the United States and you have a medical issue where do you go well you go to the Mayo Clinic in Rochester Minnesota if there's a hero in this entire story it's got to be my sister-in-law Diana who was instrumental in bringing us here much more coming from Diana later in this vlog Ironically, this road trip was from Rochester, Michigan via Chicago to Rochester, Minnesota, a trip that took us about 14 hours. As day turned into night, we finally arrived in Rochester, Minnesota. And the next morning, you find yourself in front of the Gonda building of the Mayo Clinic. It's gigantic and it looks like a hotel. If you're coming to the Mayo Clinic as a patient, the Gonda building is your first stop. This is where you would register and then go to your appointment in one of the 21 floors dedicated to various illnesses. And here's a view of the Gonda building from the other side. That would be the downtown side. Remember, it sits almost right in the middle of Rochester, Minnesota, a very imposing building. But remember, it's not a hospital. In 1889, the Sisters of St. Francis, under the leadership of Mother Alfred, opened St. Mary's Hospital, the first hospital in southern Minnesota, and it looked like this. It's now called Mayo Clinic Hospital St. Mary's Campus, and it has 1,265 beds. From the hospital, you can see the Gonda building about a kilometer away towards downtown. I was greatly impressed by the cathedral-like church that was in the hospital a great place to reflect and perhaps even hope for a miracle. Even more impressive for me was the view out this window to Assisi's Heights. At the top of the hill is a mother house of the Rochester Franciscan Sisters, who are still involved to this day in many aspects of the community. Yes, those are the same sisters who worked with Dr. Mayo and were led by Mother Alfred. That amazing story is told in the Mayo Clinic Heritage Hall located on the ground floor of the Gonda building. Go around the corner and you'll run smack dab into the two individuals 
that started the Mayo Clinic. On the right, Dr. William Worrell Mayo. On the left, Mother Alfred Mose, leader of the Sisters of St. Francis. It was the devastation of a tornado in 1883 that brought together Dr. Worrell Mayo, a respected physician, and the Sisters of St. Francis. Mayo provided the medical care and the Sisters the nursing care. An alliance came out of this. Mother Alfred came to Dr. Mayo with a bold plan to provide funds for the construction of a hospital in which the sisters would serve as nurses if Dr. Mayo and his sons would provide the medical care. The second Mayo Clinic Hospital, the Methodist Campus, is located right next to the Gonda Building. As you can see straight ahead, it has 794 beds. Two campus hospitals serve only Mayo Clinic patients and are staffed exclusively by Mayo Clinic doctors. Remember, a lot of patients go to the Mayo Clinic for extensive testing and are not necessarily hospitalized. If you're standing on the downtown side of the Gonda building and you look around, you see these uh, massively large buildings. If they aren't a hotel, then they are part of the Mayo downtown campus which comprises about 30 buildings and employs about 65,000 people, making it the second largest employer in Minnesota. That's unbelievable, but I guess there are a lot of sick people around. On the day of our appointment, the eighth floor of the Gonda building was our destination, for it is here that the world-famous neurology department is located rated number one in the United States. And we're not talking about one or two neurologists. This is a picture from 2006. The first part of the appointment was with Dr. Alfonso Sebastian Lopez, a specialist in autoimmune encephalitis. Next up was the senior neurologist, Dr. Andrew McEwen, who spent another 45 minutes with my brother. And the next part was two days of intensive testing, and this is what sets the Mayo Clinic apart. The testing is done in a very compressed period of time, and the results are released very quickly. Quickly, yes, but not instantly, so day three was a day off. The results were to be given to us on day four. They off allowed us to visit the National Eagle Center located on the Mississippi River and to explore some of the towns along the Mississippi. A very nice way to pass the day. So Diane, where, uh, where are we? We're in Wabasha. Wabasha, what's so great about Wabasha? The Mississippi River and, and the Eagle Museum. The, the National Eagle Museum. Eagle Museum. Unexpectedly, there was even time for some levity. On the shores of the Mississippi. And these are my two kids here. <laughs> Hi, kitties. How are you? Yeah, how's it going? Hi, shots. Come there, on. Smile. There's, there's Diane and. Uh, Who are you? And. He doesn't know. That's Glenn, my brother. He has no damn idea. We're working on that. <laughs> so on day four, we again had an appointment, this time with both doctors, Dr. Alfonso Lopez and Dr. Andrew McKeon. This time, the rubber hit the road as we were given the results. I'll let Diane speak to that. Diana, before going to the Mayo Clinic, we knew that Glenn's neurological condition was very, very serious. That's why we went there. What is the diagnosis that we were hoping for? Autoimmune encephalitis. And what was it about autoimmune encephalitis that would have made it, as you called it, a... A gift that was completely curable. So did we hear autoimmune encephalitis? No, we were devastated by... 
Join us next Friday for part two of this series on the Mayo Clinic as Diane eloquently goes into the ups and downs of this roller coaster ride. Come to think of it, there were very few ups, if any. Join us on Friday. Thank you.